Hello, storytellers. Storytelling Ron. Um, going to hear talk about just, I think, maybe a little more positive. I don't know. Things going on in the world. Oh, boy. Anyway, I got a lot of work to do with the, finish up the Christmas in space. Got to get to work on that. And I got a lot of events and things happening, too. I'm going to homeschool convention and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Uh, let's talk about, I want to talk about Russell Brand converting, getting baptized. Um, and I did the, you know, the Kanye one, I guess, on the, the porn video, but uh, uh, never, you know, not actually being a Christian or I don't know, his, his story's not over with yet. We'll see. But um, <laughs> anyway, let's just talk about Russell Brand. He, he, this guy's been amazing. He was, um, you know, uh, I I remember just, you know, hating him so much, though, you know, his pre, pre, previous self, his 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 left wing leftist. Uh, com, he was a hardcore left wing uh, comedian guy, very, very insulting of the right uh, and of Christians, um, very, uh, you know, a womanizer, a druggie, just an extremely vicious comedian, uh, from Britain kind of a thing. And just snarky and, you know, that voice, you know, really kind of a nasty, dark, sinister, cynical, sarcastic, jaded voice. Um, with, you know, with a lot of selfish stuff. Uh, and then to see his growth <laughs> into becoming a Christian and he was very, he be, he was becoming very spiritual and, you know, in, in Hindu and Buddhist and all that stuff. So I was like, I was like, yeah, boy, this guy is getting annoying. Um, in that sense. And he, and he's and same with Jordan Peterson at the time, um, before he was, became Christian. Uh, and now, now that they're becoming Christian or whatever, I'm so jealous. Cause now they actually get the real glory and joy. <laughs> I mean, now I'm like, what? Darn it. They're not going to hell. Darn it. Um, no, but I, I'm just joking. But, um, um, hell's a terrible place uh, for anyone. I would not w- wish that on any pagan at all, or you guys. Okay, or you know, the non-believer guys. Um, but to see him, but it was it's what's funny is like they get to they get now what I get. You know, he got all these partying, he got all these women, he got all the celebrities, but now he gets what I'm getting. That's so unfair. And what's funny is I'm so joyful. I'm so joyful. I don't care about all of their wealth and success. Jordan Peterson or whoever, like, you know, in their atheists, when they were atheists or whatever, I like when they say that I'm, I'm becoming Christian, I'm, I suddenly like, they come to my level or whatever, or actually my joy, joyful level. I feel like a joy now for them. I feel like, wow, you know, that is wonderful. Um, you know, I just feel like a joy for them that, you know, and I don't know the truth. Like I'm and he's, he's obviously being very humble about this. Um, even in his video, um, you know, he's trying to say how he's, he knows it's may not, you know, some people may not believe it and all that. And he, he gets that he's a, you know, celebrity. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like a celebrity, but he, and it's funny. He's got a wife. He's got three kids. The wife is Catholic and he's got three kids. So he's raising his kids. And I'm just, that's just amazing to me. Cause I remember when he was such a womanizer back in the day, you know, you know, taking the Hollywood by storm and playing their game. Um, and then for him to come through that now and, and just be so, and he's, you know, he's been so, um, his videos have been great about the, uh, the global elitist conspiracy theories and all that. And, um, and his desire for freedom. So this is just a wonderful video. Um, it's on, uh, not the B, I guess you guys can just play it. I don't need to play it again, but it, it, it's just, I don't know. It's just really yesterday I got baptized and it was an incredible profound experience. And many of you will have had your own experiences of baptism and will therefore know what I'm talking about. So I actually, I'm going to play it. I, I, I was planning on playing it. Um, that the secret handshake of Christians, <laughs> we have the secret handshake and we try to keep telling everyone in the world of our secret handshake, but they just don't care. So it becomes a secret cause we, <laughs> which is just the joy that we have. And we, um, you know, we have the Holy spirit and the Holy spirit protects us from demonic. Uh, we can't be like possessed or, you know, taken over by demons and full of anger. I mean, we can, but we know we are aware of it. We're aware of it. We're, we, we all call out to Jesus Christ and, um, he will expel us. So we believe in demons. We believe absolutely in demons. So if anyone here is a, an RBG hardcore, it's us Christians. <laughs> we believe, we believe in this, this it for real, uh, for realsies. Um, but the joy that we have, like in baptism and such a goofy little declaration, you know, pu- public declaration of what we believe. And I, and I say goofy in a, just in a out, you know, a, how it looks from the outside. Um, but it's, it is a weird, um, you know, moment of, you know, 
joy and um, feeling. And he, and he and he's describing things that I absolutely understand, like how he feels now, how he feels there's a little extra in him. There's a little p- peaceful buzz in there that reminds him to, of calmness. And, and uh, um, you know, he's saying that kind of stuff in here. And uh, let's see, let me play a little more. Many aspects of it were very intimate and personal. The truth is this, as a person that has in the past taken many, many substances and always been disappointed with their inability to deliver the kind of tranquility and peace and even transcendence that I always felt I've been looking for, something occurred in the process of baptism that was incredible, overwhelming, literally overwhelming, because I was obviously underwater and it was the River Thames at some points. So I felt changed transitioned now of course even though it's been less than 24 hours in the interim period i've already felt like sort of irritation i've got three (laughs) children i've got a job i've got challenges i still live in the world but i feel as if some new resource within me has switched on so many of your comments have been so beautiful and encouraging and i really appreciate it and also even the cynicism i understand because some people will just see me as a celebrity but i don't see me as a celebrity because i was me when i was a little boy i was me when i was a junkie i was me when i was poor i've been me in all of the different phases but i recognize that anything in this terrain in the sort of social media world could be exploited and utilized for me i've made the decision and i know what the decision is i've made it for myself and i pray that it, it will be relevant to my family in particular. so if you became a christian there's the amazing thing about um, Christianity, unlike, unlike Islam or anything else, any other religion or pagans or whatever. Um, well, pagan is everything. Um, you, uh, when you become a Christian, you decide, you know, you as a person decide, uh, what to do. Like not the church and the pastor can't tell you what to do. The elders can't tell you what to do. They, they can kick you out of the church. That's the power they have kicking out of the church. <laughs> That's it. Uh, but obviously you want to be part of a church to learn, to, to learn, uh, better and, and to learn humility, to learn, to be a part of a corporate body somehow. Um, so you, yeah, you literally do get to shop around for a church. Obviously my suggestion is the one that ha- opens their Bible and s- studies it from the Bible. They don't, you know, they don't talk in, in charismatic ways in the sense of like, we're going to talk about giving this week. We're going to talk about love this week. We're going to talk about, you know, family this week. No study the Bible, you know, chapter to chapter. That'll, that'll give you all those. I mean, they can do a, a love, but it'll be on this chapter. This one's about love. You know, I don't, when they do stuff like, let's talk about love, but then they sort of p- pick out little verses and things like that. And then talk about their life and their, and then things happening in the world and, and God's with you. That's, you don't want that. You want them to get into the word, get, you know, focus on, uh, from the B, from a to the Z, th- that chapter, reading through that contextual history and then what the, what the lesson is in there and then referencing different other parts of the Bible that, that refer to it as well. Because you want the pastors and the elders uh, to be confined to the word and not their own ideas of the word. Okay. So that's just my suggestion. When you go to church, make sure it's one that they literally read through the Bible, you know, studying to, to teach it, not, come up with their own little lesson plans and then pick and choose what, 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 what quotes they want to use. And if they quote other God, other religions or other, not religious, but let's say they quote, um, famous people or philosophers, not interested. I mean, if they do some of the Christians that relate to the word, you know, that one, that's fine. But, but I, I, there's one I had, I, this woman pastor, of course, I, it was a long time ago, but I remember her saying, I picked the wisest things from this and this and this. I'm like, well, then you're the God. If you pick the wisest things from this and this and that, you know, the God is not God. If you're, if you're going to decide what's something from, from Gandhi and something from, uh, whoever, and blah, 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 then <laughs> you're the God and <laughs> not for me anyway. Particular, my children, my wife's Catholic, you know, she's already made her own choices in this life, including this one. This is new for me. I'm learning and I will make mistakes, but this is my. That's interesting. She's Catholic and he's, he's not Catholic. I don't, I don't obviously it's not because he would say if he was, so she goes to a mass, I guess. And he goes to a separate church. It's kind of weird. Um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be very right now. My argument, my, my 
ministry here is not to go up against Catholics or Orthodox uh, Christians. I, I think those two um, can use the, you know, my, my for the Lord uh, as well. I, I prefer having that argument later. <laughs> we have a bigger problem uh, right now. I mean, I don't accept uh, Mormonism or Jehovah's or anything like that. I, and only because mainly because I don't really know that much about them and they're historically not part, they're not part of the history that I'm interested in, which is church history, which uh, Orthodox and Catholics have a big part in role in obviously. And, um, uh, so that's why I'm not interested in Jehovah's or Mormons because they're American modern history. And it doesn't interest me. Um, uh, you know, I, it's just, uh, you, you got, you know, I can't, I got to pick my battles and, and I know or whatever. And I don't want to, I want to focus on certain things. Uh, all right, let's just keep, keep come on for a little bit. My path now. And I already feel incredibly blessed, relieved, nourished, held. It's been an incredible experience. I wish I could tell you exactly about it because there were amazing individuals involved. There were incredible and bizarre incidents that took place that felt serendipitous and laden. You know, I do a show every day. I'll be talking about this stuff in the show because it's part of my mission. And So I'm definitely going to follow him more now as far as uh, I do enjoy it. I did before he even, you know, this, I, I did enjoy his stuff for a while. But, but I want to find Christians fighting the fight, the good fight, not, you know, I, like Dave Rubin, so Dave Rubin, the gay conservative. I do like him. I, I, I respect him greatly. Um, and I, re I respected this guy for what he was doing. So as a Christian, I can certainly respect uh, these types of individuals, but I didn't want them to be like um, my commonality of, of listening to them. But I will not turn away from Dave Rubin on, you know, on YouTube. And I do listen to his stuff. Uh, even though he's gay and then he promotes gay marriage, right. And, and, and adopting kids cause he has kids. So what does that mean then for me? I, I mean, I don't worship the guy or anything like that. I just, he, so many of the topics he does is, are, are important to me and I want to hear what kind of his, you know, his take is on it. Um, so I'm saying as a Christian, I don't, it doesn't bother me to listen to other individuals. If, if they're, if they're, if they're aiming for freedom, uh, I'm aiming for freedom because in freedom, we, we win Christians win. So I'm not really, so if he's going to aim for freedom, great. I mean, you know, I, I pray for him that he, you know, yeah, will change his life. And, um, and I'm trying to say it in a way I, I don't want to be gay anymore, but like, he's got to get divorce his husband. He's got to realize that his kids need a mother. So I, absolutely. I'm just trying to figure out the right way to say that one. I just said it. So there. Um, you know, but I would, re, you know, if, if, if I ever talked to him, I would just, I would say that clearly. You, you can't be ashamed to say that to someone, um, and lose their friendship or whatever. You can't, you can't be afraid to say that to anyone that even if someone you respect and, and, and know they're in the fight with you, you gotta be able to say stuff like that. It's hard to say it in person, especially when the setting is like for some other reason or whatever. Um, it is hard, but you, we, we gotta work on that. We just got to keep working on it. And to me, for the Lord RPG is one way to do it. We got to work on our evangelism. Uh, and the way to do that now is, you know, I had a, I had a, we had a dinner with a couple the other night and, uh, I, I, I was so much better because of the game, because of this game, I talked about p picking up the cross, you know, you got to pick up your cross, whatever it is, you know, uh, that was in our conversation pretty heavily. Uh, I, and I lightened it up after a little while because it was it was a lot. You know, we were drinking margaritas. I'm yeah. I'm sorry. I'm do drink, uh, but I don't. I don't like getting drunk. I don't. I hate getting drunk, but I do enjoy uh, drinking and, and and then eating food and stuff like that. But uh, I don't recommend it though if you have problems with drinking for sure. And I do not want to drink that much for sure. It, it's pretty, uh, you know, um, kind of ruins a lot. You know. D and what Paul says in, in the New Testament is it's dissipation, I believe, or something like that. What's the word? But it's a waste of time. <laughs> it kind of wastes your time. That's what, that's what his thing is. Don't drink too much because it wastes your time. You know, drink too much wine because it, it's, um, it does. It wastes your time. And I, I agree with that. Um, okay. Uh, let's keep going here a little bit because I got things to do. I'm so excited. I just, I always have things to do. I want to do, you know, for the Lord. I just want to keep doing work on it. I work Monday through Saturday um, if I can. Uh, I literally do. And then, um, I mean, I get tired around six, seven, you know, and you know, whatever. I'm kind of 
my brain has to do other things, but uh, or relax or zombie out. And Sunday I go to church, but I, I zombie out and I totally zombie out on Sunday. I, I force myself to, that really, really is helpful. Uh, here we go. And it's part of my ministry and it's part of my service. Ministry. This is new to me and it's a joy to me. So I, that's, that's the way I feel about For the Lord RPG. It's, this is, For the Lord RPG is new to me. It's a joy to me. It's my ministry. And he's, he's turning his work into his ministry. And that's wonderful. And for you, that's the thing you need to do too. You need to figure out a way to turn whatever you do in a ministry. Now, if you're a plumber, don't, don't, don't go. No, don't go witness to your clients. Don't do that. Figure out something that like this, like a, a, a turn your hobby into a ministry. If you're, if you're a Christian RPG person, I, here you go. And I, I want to say this. I don't own it. Okay. Like in the sense of, and technically by law, nobody owns a game, game rules. So you can take my ideas and, and put them into your D and D or whatever. The The main pro- priority though is evangelism and church planning. You need to, your characters need to evangelize in the game. It, it creates, um, uh, the psyche that we all need to be evangelists again, or it gives us that habit and it's a wonderful habit to have and you should practice it. And if you're a Christian RPG or what a way to do it while you're doing the funnest thing ever. All right. And I know that I'm not expected to be perfect, and I know that that's not something I'll be able to deliver. Those of you that have embraced me, I'm so grateful. I can't tell you how happy I feel and how relieved I feel. But as you know, if you know, my resources are coming from somewhere else and someone else now. Thank you so much for your support. Let's keep doing this together, or certainly I'm just going to do what I'm doing. I love you so much. I'm so grateful to be surrendered in Christ. See you all. So, yeah, what a wonderful thing. I hope this is, you know, it, it feels genuine, I, and but I'm not going to worship this guy. I'm not going to put him on a pedestal or anything like that. I'm going to, as a Christian, you take your time with people. Um, you know, don't be harsh with people new converts obviously but don't give them positions of it says in the, in the testament don't give a new convert a, a, a position of whatever because they're going to get con, you know puffed up with conceit it's in one you know where it is anyway uh, so it's uh it's a wonderful thing to see someone become christian and and just them becoming christian and then having that uh public announcement it's such a powerful hilarious hilarious in the sense powerful uh ha- you know happy thing but it's hilarious because it's so offensive to so many and and that's why it's so powerful is that in our simple conversion and and professing of that we 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 hurt evil way more than our you know you know anything else that we do just just people can converting and saying why and what they feel and how they feel uh, and for those who deconvert, they were never, you know, the truth is they were never converted. <clears throat> um, they just, they thought this would be the way that, that made them happy or fulfilled them. But they're, you know, anyway, that's, that's a whole other topic, but it's, I mean, I don't care either way. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Like, I don't care when, when evil tries to slander Christianity or say how weak it is or how pathetic it is, or or the, the people who deconvert, you know, deconvert, I don't believe in that, but who, who stop being, say they're not Christian anymore because it didn't fulfill them. It doesn't in any way shatter uh, the faith or me or, or you know, Christianity because Christianity will, per, will is the truth and will keep going. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to do that video on, on, on Russell Brand and uh, I'm going to definitely start. I really like his stuff. So, you know, you guys should check it out too. He's, he's, he's very good. He's better than me as far as talking that's for sure um and now that he's christian i remember too though for a while there he was like you know G- jesus buddha wh- whatever is your game your game your bag it's great it's as long as it's peace and love so he was worshiping peace and love before very heavily and i'm like <clears throat> you know pa- uh, you know paganism um fake f- fake love peace and love but now that he's and and i and to see his transition over time like that and to see him f- seeking truth is 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 interest is interesting. I gotta you know I'm gonna look more into having him be one of my people I listen to on on YouTube that I have um, you know podcasts or you know I podcast him when I go for walks and stuff like that. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, we'll see. But um, uh, all right. So that was my little video, little positive video today. I got work to do. I got other videos I want to do as well. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll see. All right. Game of life, everybody.
start your ministry, whatever it is, even if it's your hobby, if it, you know, if you, maybe you do woodwork, you know, you make, you, you do make some crosses or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, you got to take up the cross somehow, but, but it's, it's gotta be joyful. Make, make, make sure it's joyful. And, and, and if you don't, if you're not doing anything, oh, <clears throat> if you're not doing anything at all and you don't have any of these type of skills, then do your regular boring job or whatever it is, make your money and support one of those ministries. You know, so if you know, if you're a Christian RPG or support this and hey, me, um, or, you know, or buy it or, or whatever you can do. Uh, or, but if you're more legit in your charities, then support the church, support life, pro-life things support. You know, if you don't have the, the means to be a ministry, then find one that you do like that you, that you, and you could be, and be involved in it in the sense of like, um, if you do give them money, then be involved in the sense of helping them handle the money correctly or, you know, that kind of thing. Then in that kind of sense. So, so do something, whatever it is. And, and there's plenty of th- options out there, right? At my church, there's so many different voluntary things that people do there. Just janitor cleaning, you know, cleaning up the place. Uh, some of the old guys are just the, the, the door people or whatever. That's fine. You know, you're serving the church in some way. Serving the church is obviously the best and simplest and, and easiest and joyful way to, to be a part, a mi- part of the ministry. Uh, and that's fine. Absolutely fine. That's, that's definitely, I appreciate it. You know, someone that comes to church, there are so many volunteers there <clears throat> doing things. And you know, that our church does have, uh, a bunch of elders all knowing where the money's going, who's, who's handling what, um, there's like 20 or 30 elders. Um, you know, and we even found a guy who was like number two. He was like, man, one of our, one of our guys too, uh, they, you know, he was corrupt. He embezzled and he was like, he wasn't number two, but he was, he felt like number two cause he was part of the elders. And then he was, uh, always got up and did the announcements and you know, things like that. And the dude was, I didn't like the guy <laughs> even before that. When, when I had interaction with him, he's like, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I got things to do. I'm, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm a member of the church. If you're so busy, you can't even help a member of the church. Maybe you're doing too much. <clears throat> I didn't say that to him because I want to be rude, but that's why I felt I was like, if this guy's so busy doing stuff yet, yeah, I'm one of the people he should be helping. Something's wrong with him. He's, he's doing, if he can't, you know what I mean? If he can't help me, he's what the heck? What, what, you know, <clears throat> uh, it was, anyway, I don't want to get to all the story, but to hear that that happened later, I was like, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're all sinners and we're, none of us are perfect even as Christians. So, uh, I, I, I was about to end this like 10 minutes ago. Anyway, all right. In the game, in the game of life, in the game of life, roll holy dice.